Hello and welcome to Game of Babble. I'm your host, Jell. The Simple Series, a somewhat infamous series of budget titles released only in Japan for around 20 bucks. This series of low-budget titles sold at a low price was a breeding ground for really, really bizarre shit. But amidst the madness of the Simple series, a few titles stood out above the rest. One of them was Earth Defense Force. The other was the One Chambara. Now the name may not sound familiar to you, but if I told you it's that one with the chick in the bikini with the cowboy hat killing zombies, yeah, that one. Yeah, now you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, you're about to find out. The series began simplistically enough, but later it became successful and got an expansion pack. And then a sequel. And then an expansion pack to the sequel. And then, when prices of game development went up this latest console generation, it and Earth Defense Wars were first on the list to be released as almost full price titles for the Xbox 360, bringing us the Onechanbara Vortex and then later the Onechanbara Revolution for the Nintendo Wii. This all culminates now with the Onechanbara the movie. Yes, that's right, a budget title has become a live action movie. Anyway, the Onechanbara is a confusing series. Most people don't know very much about it, other than that it exists in that sense it's very much fan service based and only cost 20 bucks originally, it's probably crap. This is the logic most people go by, but is it really true? Heck, what does it even play like? Back when it was first released, everyone was calling it a Devil May Cry clone. Then, later on, people started calling it a Dynasty Warriors clone. Devil May Cry and Dynasty Warriors are two completely different things. The only thing they have in common is chopping things up. It, so, what the hell's it like? America's basically been left in the dark on this. Well, no more. D3 has finally opened an American publishing arm, and they have finally decided to bring over the Onechanbara Revolution for the Nintendo Wii under the title The Onechanbara Bikini Zombie Slayers. After a little bit of fan complaining, Vortex, the 360 release, was also announced for a US release under the title The Onechanbara Bikini Samurai Squad. These titles finally reaching American shores, this leaves us with a big question. Are they any fucking good? Most people would say no, but then again, most people don't know jack shit about the series. What the hell's the deal with the One Chambar? Well, handily enough, I happen to have a copy of the One Chambar Vortex right here. So I can tell you all about it. It opens delightfully enough with a happy J-pop theme song and clips of various cutscenes shown throughout the game. After that, you can choose between a story mode, a free play mode, a survival mode and a practice mode, as well as a 360 exclusive dress up mode. Now then, you get your choice of three different characters Aya, the main character, Saki, her little sister in a school uniform, and Anna, the new to 360 character who uses guns, which really mixes things up. After picking two characters, because it's actually played tag team, you're thrown into the game. It's very simplistic in nature, basically, you just move from room to room, killing zombies. Occasionally a bloody fence will pop out of the ground, and then you have to kill basically all the zombies within the bloody fence in order to make it go away. Occasionally you have to look for a key item to open a door, but generally speaking, stage design is incredibly simplistic. The meat of the game is in the combat, which, believe it or not, is actually surprisingly deep. Let's see, first of all you have a regular attack button. You can hit this multiple times to do a combo, but if you time your attack button presses for right when the sword hits the zombie, it will make an X-shaped explosion and the screen will get blurry. Your next attack will be faster and hit harder. If you keep doing this again and again, you'll actually be able to go past your preset combo limit and produce a longer combo on top of doing more damage, and at certain points you can actually press forward and X to do alternate moves. Also, you can lock on to a zombie using the uh, right bumper, and then press back and X to do a launcher, or forward and X to do a stab. Then you have Y button, which tends to be your kicks. You can press... you can just do two kicks, or you can lock on and press down and kick to do a sweep kick, lock on and up and kick to do a jumping kick, left and right to do side kicks, and then the B button is your specialty attack, which 
which for I at first throws shurikens, but then you can press the left trigger to switch to two sword style, which makes not only the special attack slightly different, but also gives you a different normal attack sequence, and then the fact that it's played tag team, so you can switch out to another character who has their own unique move list and special abilities, then you have the fact that if you keep a combo going long enough, you fill this gauge allowing you to press X and Y simultaneously to do some kind of crazy spinning attack, and then you can also press Y and B to do the screen freezing sword slash attack, and there's a lot of moves. Let me pull out the move list here. Yeah. This is the move list. Yeah, it's, uh, kinda expansive. Well, there's one last thing I have to pay it to point out. Your sword, as you chop up these zombies, gets bloody. As it gets bloodier, it actually close, it actually shrinks the timing window for the cool combinations, which is already pretty small as it is, so you're going to want to keep your sword clean. If it gets too dirty, your sword will actually get stuck inside zombies. It's also worth noting that these zombies do not play by normal zombie rules. Chopping off their heads will not kill them. They have to take a certain amount of damage. Even if you've chopped off their entire upper body, they will still keep coming, or try to keep coming, as zombie pants. Truly, there is nothing more terrifying than zombie pants. And then there's a rather peculiar option in the options menu, allowing you to change the blood to white. Why would you want to replace the blood with a white, sticky liquid that gets all over the girl? They're bukake zombies, aren't they? Yeah. That might get cut from the US release if someone realizes why it's there. So yeah, the combat is actually surprisingly deep. There's a good amount to it, but this does not mean it's so much a good game. It's very rough. In fact, it's incredibly buggy. And let's face it, the stage design is not so good. It's very bland. Most people probably won't like it, and I can guarantee you it's going to get terrible reviews. However, there are a few people like me who will really enjoy this because it's a good, surprisingly deep hack and slash, and you know, it's hard to say no to something like this. Now, there's a few other things I really like that's worth noting. Number one, you can actually sacrifice the tag team single player play for split screen two player play, and you can play all the modes in two-player split-screen play. There's no online play, but it's still pretty neat. And one other thing that I don't know if this is a strength or a weakness, there is actually a now-loading mini-game. This should say something about how long the load times are, but at the same time this is kind of fun. Um, although it also says something when there's actually boss zombies and charge attacks and two-player co-op play in your now loading screens. Now one other thing that I need to mention, in Japan an expansion pack was actually released on Xbox Live for a download. This added two new outfits for each of the existing characters as well as three extra characters which are based on the bosses in the game. Now there's one last thing you're probably wondering, why would fans complain about the Onechambara Revolution getting ported over and not Vortex. Um, that's because it's on Wii, and not because of Wii Hate, but because they did in fact implement Waggle Control. As far as I know, there is no classic controller support unless this was changed, and basically all they did was replace the attack button press with a controller waggle. And in something as timing critical as the One Chambara, as well as something that's as tacky and slashy and requires as much sword waving as the One Chambara, that could really ruin things. And so there's a good chance that if the Wii release was the only one making it to America, that would give everyone a really bad impression of it. Thankfully, we're getting both the more recent Wii release as well as the Xbox 360 release, and I can at least put my seal of approval on the Japanese 360 release and probably the American one too. Don't expect it to get a lot of good press, because it probably won't. And on top of all that, this was basically a first-generation 360 title. When was this released? Uh, let's see here. 2006. So, there you go. That's the scoop on the One Chambara. 
very simplistic, very rough, surprisingly deep combat. Anyway, this is Jell, and you've been Game Babbled.